Hi, good morning everybody. This is Monday after the James River Tournament where I finished 49th place. I've actually driven all the way back to the border of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and this is where I slept last night in this parking lot, which is something I often do, traveling, driving these long distances, sleeping in my camper and various truck stops and parking lots throughout the lands. But anyways, enough about that. We want to talk about the tournament at the James River. Um, like I said, it finished 49th, which means I fished the three days. Day one, after day one, I was 20th. After day two, I dropped down to 42nd and then continued to drop with a very weak five fish limit of 6-1 on the last, on the third day. Congratulations to Nick LeBroom, who was the eventual winner. He's won two of our tournaments in a row, which is an uh, incredible feat. And he'll be the first, he has a chance to be the first person to win three in a row at our last stop at Lake Champlain. So congrats to him. I don't really know him that much. However, he seems like a very cordial, uh, nice person, genuine person. So, yeah, good fishman, obviously. So, anyway, so let's talk about the strategies at the James. Um, you know, it's, I just, I look at a river system like that, whether it's Potomac, the Upper Mississippi River, or the James, and it's just that river type of a environment to me just screams, you know, fish shallow, five feet and less. And that's pretty much what everybody, most people did in this tournament. Certainly, the guys that finished in the top ten. Uh, you know, I did. I did have the uh, live stream on while I was driving. I don't watch it. I just have it on so I can listen to the commentators, listen to what the anglers are saying, and uh, and listen to the clackety clack of uh, the buzz baits and the top waters, and the flopping of the fish when they hit the boat. Um, I really enjoy the live streams. They are very informative. Those are the types of videos I watch on YouTube. You know, when they, let's say I don't get a chance to watch a live stream, well then, oftentimes I will just watch the post of it on YouTube. Very informative. You're not getting, uh, um, you're not getting sold a bill of goods by somebody just trying to push a, a, a product. Um, so these are, you're actually seeing what the fishermen are using and what they're catching the fish on. You, you still might get a, a, you still might get a quick, a quick promotional job on a, on a fish catch, you know. Guy might be sponsored by Alterine Tackle, for example, like me. And, and if I catch a fish on it while on live stream, I might mention the name of the jig, but you know, hey, that's, that's what we do. We promote and catch fish. So, back to the strategies, um, you know, shallow water, and i have been to the James River before, so one time, well twice, once in 2003 when it was a horrible fishery, and then a few years ago for a Bassmaster Open, where I did alright, finishing the money in that Open tournament, so, and that was in the Chickahominy uh, tributary, so that's where I started the first day of practice. Um, I checked my spots from uh, that tournament a few years ago, and they had nothing but small fish. Then I, you know, then obviously I went hunt, hunting for uh, new new places where they might be, and never really connected with any quality fish. Um, I did see one like four to five pounders at high tide swimming across a really shallow flat. It almost seemed like it was lost. I threw my float frog over there and it actually started tracking right under it towards the boat before I pulled it away, so he might have hit it. Um, but that was the only like quality, I mean, in that little spot, in that spot there, that was like the only fish I even saw, let alone, uh, you know, trying to go back there and catch that one fish in the tournament would be nearly impossible. So, anyways, after fishing the Chickahominy on the first day of practice, uh, I was really frustrated. I caught a, I did catch, a, a, I mean, like 40 keepers, but you know, my limp 
limit, my best five fish limit would have been maybe like 10, 11 pounds out of those 40 keepers. So it's not my thing. It's not what I'm, you know, I figured I got to get like 13, 14 pounds minimum a day to do anything in the tournament. So the day two, um, I decided to uh, put in at takeoff, which was Osborne Landing. That's probably like 40 miles from the mouth of the uh, Chickahominy. So I put in there, and after 15 minutes of fishing, uh, I caught a four pounder. So that right, that right there just sold me on, you know, that okay, this is part of the river where I'm going to fish. So after the first day, so after practicing up there by Osborne. Um, I don't know, I probably had, I had a nice, probably like 16 pound bag or so, um, and it seemed kind of easy to catch them, especially this one area late in the day I got into around lower tide, and it was really easy to catch them, and that became my primary spot. So fast forward to day one, I'm going to this place where it was an easy like 14, 15 pounds, like in an hour. And so I go there, it's the wrong tide, it's high tide. We're being, we're being pelted by, uh, there, there's lightning bolts just just flashing all over the place and just crack, the crack, it's the really crackly, just staticky lightning. I mean, when it cracks, it's just, it's got that super cracky sound to it. Um, that's just <clears throat> dancing all over the place. A little hairy, and the fish, I wasn't catching fish. Uh, but it, was a, it wasn't the same tide, but I did, I did, after a couple of hours, I got out of there with a couple fish. Not big ones, small ones. Uh, then I went to my secondary area, which was where I caught most of my catch the first day. Uh, the, the spot was on fire. It was really good. Um, I lost a couple of even bigger fish that would have... Uh, uh, done me even better but after the day one I was in 20th place I did catch them uh, on the all-terrain swim jig I did, I did make one nice call off the wing dam uh, or a jetty they call them um, after I got out of there later in the day but uh, but I left that area feeling like there was still a few fish there that I could come back to the next day so I had 16 pounds even on day one and was the 20th place with the, with the feeling that hey that's I'm happy about that catch but at the same time I've had the feeling that dang I left some meat on the table with some quality fish that got off so fast forward the next day day two um, I'm gonna start on that good spot where I caught them I'm like you know it's it's gonna be high, it's gonna be like dead high tide when I get there oh by the way just back up to day one I did at high tide or at low tide I did go back to my starting spot from day one the spot that I felt like I had the best opportunity for 14 to 15 pounds or even to catch a giant who knows I went back there at the same tide where I caught him the day before or close to the same tide and I just caught one tiny keeper that you know didn't help at all so I don't know what happened in there I don't know what was going on. I couldn't catch them. Two different tides, could not catch them. So, all right, so back to day two. So I'm going to where I caught the, you know, caught a several nice fish, the, you know, the backbone of my first day catch. And it was like a dead high tide pretty much. Got in there um, and nothing was happening. I mean, I, I, made, two, I made two passes through the area couple different throw a couple different options you know obviously the, the, the El terrain swim jig was one of them and uh, throwing some top waters uh, just nothing never saw a fish blow up whereas the day before I saw occasional fish blow up on uh, some tiny shad not a darn thing was happening so but in the, my mind I'm like well it's dead high tide you know it's uh, you know maybe it's just not quite right here so then I go about uh, um, uh, fishing some other spots of mine, and it's just not happening. I, I, I eventually I catch a couple, 
and then uh, um, so I got two just small ones and then it's late much later in the day now and I decided to go back to my starting or yeah to this good spot from day one where I started at the morning to day two because the tide was I calculated that the tide was about the same as when I pulled in there and I did pull in there and looking at the water line in the area I was like yeah this is this is the same tide this is the same point in the tide where I blasted them the day before two passes through there again not a single bite nothing so disappointing and quite frankly a little stunned and shocked by the lack of fish there because they were there in practice and they were there the first day of the tournament where did they go what happened um, I'm sure anybody that's fishes a lot has had this happen where you go to a fishing spot one day and just catch all kinds of fish feel like you leave the spot with more fish to be caught but you leave them and then you excuse me and then you come back sorry then you come back the next day and uh, nothing's to be found. So now I'm like, okay, I've only got two fish, two little ones. Now what do I do? So I still had some places I hadn't checked yet from uh, practice. So I went to this, uh, um, this one backwater area where, you know, I had, there was a nice little stretch where I had several bites and these fish were biting, but they weren't very big. So I ended up getting, uh, filling out my limit and calling a couple times. They weren't that big. Um, but so eventually pulled out of there, had a little bit, ran up towards Osborne, fished around there for the last hour. Caught probably my biggest fish, which was barely, maybe barely two and a half pounds. And ended up weighing, uh, um, what did I weigh? Uh, 11 one so now I made the top 50 40 second place so that's pretty awesome always happy about that that means you're guaranteed getting paid at that point all top 50 competitors get paid as well as 51 through 75th got paid after day two <clears throat> so on day three um, I decided I was just gonna go pre-fish and I'm still fishing the upper reaches of the river. First spot I pull into, like within three minutes, I catch my first keeper, but it was super tiny, like 12 and a half inches, probably didn't even weigh a full pound. Five minutes later, I have a really big fish. And I caught that little one on, uh, on a Nico rig worm, which we'll, we'll be showing you the rods and tackle here in a minute. So then, Five minutes later, a really big fish follows a, a buzzing toad up to the bait. A really big one. So that was kind of disappointing not to get that one. But now I'm like, I'm really confident in this area I've selected. Hour plus later, I haven't had another bite. <laughs> so, and that's kind of how it went for, I mean, I kept kind of practicing, trying new places that look good on the map. Uh, just trying to fish trying to get through this high tide with some kind of something to show for it because the high tide is always the weak part of the day and nothing was happening I got away from one thing I like to do at high tide is go way in the backs of the creeks as far as I can for some reason I got away from that I didn't do that disappointed that was a major miscalculation as uh, after watching the live stream that was the strategy of a couple of uh, a couple of the guys in the top ten um, during high tide was to go as far back in these creeks as you could and uh, it's something I've had luck with in the past on, on tidal rivers and it just I got away from that idea and that was a mistake that's what I should have done at high tide didn't do it in fact one of the new places I did fish was a creek I did fish a creek I hadn't fished but instead of going all the way to the back I fished at the mouth of it and then for like the next 300 yards never had a bite i should have idled 300 yards in or farther and then started fishing back towards the back 
it was a mistake so anyways it was just a, it was just a grind um, I never uh, it, it's just nothing not much was happening I, I was hooking a few fish here and there and they were coming off frustration was really setting in I wasn't getting any quality bites the fish that were coming off were nothing more than one and a half to two pounders um, so it got deep so it got deep into the day I, by this time I probably had half hour left and had just three fish one was one of which was a 12 and a half inch and the others were like one and a half pound fish so now I'm now it's almost dead low tide and I'm like okay I'll go to the spot now where on day one I blasted them and had you know it had the bulk of my big bag and I go there with um, you know, just hoping that stuff's gonna happen, hoping that the decision returned. The first piece of cover I throw at with a whopper plopper, I catch my fourth fish. It's a 12 and a quarter inch fish. Mind you, the minimum size for this term is 12 inches. A 12 and a quarter inch bass that probably does not even weigh a pound. Most of them don't. But I have a fourth fish, so hey, you know, small victory. About two minutes later, I flip the L-terrain swim jig over to a log, and I catch a 13-inch fish. So now I have yet another small victory, and it is a victory. It is there is a victory, another victory, a long-term victory in that uh, every day of tournament fishing this year. So this would be through nine tournaments now. Every day I've managed to bring in a limit of fish. So that that streak remained intact with that 13 inch fish. And I'm not even to the juice yet of the spot. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is good now. I mean, these are little ones, but hey, you know, fish are biting and it's the low tide. I've just caught two fish and I'm not even to the sweet juice of this uh, thing of fishing here. And what it is is it's the it's the mouth of one of these uh, of one, it's the, it's the mouth of one of these uh, backwater areas, and so I get up into the juice, <laughs> and the juice is not there, man. It's uh, I mean I'm fishing right through the right through the prime stuff that was just holding so many fish on day one, and that was holding fish in practice. And just every time I flip that jig, I'm just like, here it comes and nothing. Cast it over here, nothing. Cast it over there, nothing. Pick up the whopper plopper and just buzz it right over the, the, this, uh, you know, this prime freaking log and nothing. Um, I don't know where those fish went. Uh, obviously, well, some of them went my live well, but uh, there was fish still there when I left them day one, and uh, that's probably that's probably a stupid mistake to leave them day one. I, you know, in hindsight now, I guess I should have just stayed there and just caught everything possible. But I never imagined they would have left because it just seemed like a prime place to just set up and stage and hang out. I, I could, never would have anticipated they would have left. Now with smallmouths on the other hand, a lot of times I often just stay and drill the crap out of them because some smallmouths are more volatile. But with largemouths, sometimes you know you got to be concerned with fish management over a four-day tournament. So with largemouths, sometimes I'm I'm going to just leave fish for the next day out of you know out of a school that I'm fishing, especially if I know I'm the only one fishing it. So anyhow, I ended up 49th place. I like that last day, my five fish weighed six pounds, one ounce. You know, it was a limit of fish. There were no penalties on that. Those five fish weighed six pounds, one ounce. So, kind of embarrassing to, to weigh all the little ones, but the small victory I'm getting a little bit was attained in the last, uh, last little bit of fishing for the day. So, to the rods now, okay? Um, Again, you can see some you can see some familiar baits from all year long. This ain't really
really one of them. And uh, no sense in even talking about that because it wasn't much of a player. But let's get to the players, okay? That ain't a player either. I gotta get rid of these ones on top that aren't the players, sorry. Hope you're still with me. If not, you're gonna miss out on some just awesome lures. All right, here's a bait you've seen before. That's an eco rig. There's lead weight inserted in there. And uh, that was good for, uh, uh, it's more of a low tide. You know, if, if I'm throwing at some woody cover that's old and rotted and doesn't have a lot of fresh leafy branches, I can throw that in there and it's not going to get hung up. It, it, the hook is a, uh, you know, the hook's got them wire guards, you know, to help snake it through the uh, branches and that, but the really leafy, gnarly, uh, fresh lay downs, you, you really can't. All you can do is hit the edges with that thing. That's good for rock cover. It's good for uh, the old laydowns, uh, current, you know, little current eddies and seams. It's good for that kind of stuff. And uh, and you can get quality fish on it for sure. It's a little worm, but it works. Um, next, well, here's the same thing. I actually have two of these rigged up. One with the weed guard and one without. The one without, I throw at, you know, I leave that more for the uh, stuff where I'm not going to get hung up. So let's say it's a single, single jetty piling. Well, I can throw that there. And the reason why I'd rather throw the, the, the weedless one or the uh, one without the guard is because I have a better hookup ratio. <clears throat> so that's why I have those two set up. The one with the guard. You're gonna lose more fish with that. The one without the guard, much better hooking percentage. So I use that whenever I can. And whenever I'm fishing in aquatic vegetation, just most most all the time I'm using, not all the time, it depends how heavy it is, but a lot of times I'm using the one without any guard on it. But there was, I mean, but a, <clears throat> mainly it was hard cover that I was fishing with the James. All right, here's the bait. Oh, and I never, yeah, I did have one oppor another opportunity for a really big one on the last day. Um, I forgot to mention that a minute ago, but it was right where I caught a four pounder in, uh, on the second day of practice. And it, it just a huge fish just mauled my uh, whopper plopper and somehow I didn't get a hook in it. But anyways, this bait uh, was all right for searching and that's the one that that really big one followed up on on the uh, last day. Did bite it? I, I think he just came up late on it, and then he saw the boat and said, oh, "No deal." All right. Uh, here's the uh, all-terrain swim jig. Um, this is in the head. This is the heaviest one they got. It's the heaviest size. I'm trying to think what that is. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, they got three sizes. It's the heaviest one of the three. So I use it as much for flipping as I do just swimming. I use it for both out. You know, it just kind of depends on what covers in front of me. I'll flip it into a, you know, flooded bush. And then if there's a lay down there, I'll flip it there or sometimes swim it by. Um, then it's got a, uh, this trailer on there. That's a, uh, um, and you know it's got one flapper instead of two. I just like to reduce this profile down a little bit on that, especially when the bite's tough. So I took the one flapper off and leaving the bait with just one flapper. And believe me, I catch plenty of fish with it like that. And that was the main bait. That was probably the main bait. Counted for most of the fish. Um, now, For the other one, this caught, this was the, the one nice call that I made on the day one after uh, you know, the, the rock jetty fish call that I made it was on this black whopper plopper and uh, 
I caught, I don't know, the fish really seemed to like that. At low tide, I could catch a lot of fish on that. And up in the uh, chicken hominy in practice, I caught a ton of fish on low tide with this thing, a ton. Um, but they're just small ones. So I put these, uh, put these covers on there and any baits with treble hooks I like to put this on here just to help manage uh, the tangling in the rod box. So anyways we'll leave the rest of that stuff in there. Um, you know obviously I got you know a bunch more rods in there rigged up that I used here and there but they didn't really become players in the event. <clears throat> so uh, in hindsight um, my weaknesses on the James were one, losing fish. That was a weak part of my game. Um, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes uh, it was just some quirky stuff happened. Like one fish, I don't know, I was just about to swing him in and all of a sudden he got out, he got into the trolling motor. Like, how did this happen? I don't even still don't know how he did it. But he did. And then, of course, he came off when he did that. And, uh, just other, I don't know what happened. I just don't know why I lost the fish I did in some cases. One, like the biggest one I lost was a four and a half pounder on the first day. And I, I, ha, I had uh, tension on the line while I was trying to reach for the net and the fish jumped. I still had tension on the line, but he jumped and threw the jig on the jump. Um, but I'm thinking back on that, I'm like, well, <clears throat> had I done what I normally do and played them the way I normally would, that might not have happened. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna have to rethink uh, my netting strategy on these fish. So, because that, I think, I honestly think had I played that fish normally, when <clears throat> the way I normally do, I don't think I would have lost that fish, but it is what it is. <clears throat> and then the other weakness was that my high tide fishing. It was high, every day it was high tide up there around Osborne Landing on um, the upper sections where I was fishing. I was fishing above Osborne and below Osborne, probably no more than seven miles away either end. And uh, um, so was, I was always dealt high tide in the morning. I wasn't able to solve that. I, I, in the back, I knew in the back of my mind, the principle. I knew the governing principle was to get as far back in those creeks as you can. And uh, I didn't really, didn't really run with that, like I, with the conviction I needed to. And that's a confidence. So that's a conviction. That's an experience that, you know, I don't. I've got experience on tidal rivers, but. You know, there's not in every situation, not a, I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I'm not fully rounded like a local might be. But every cast is a new experience. Every second, every minute that ticks by of the day while you're out fishing gives you added experience, gives you added knowledge of what's going on. Um, the year's been a good year so far. You know, I'm lacking my top tens, but of uh, nine tournaments I fished this year, so that'd be five now on the pro circuit, three on the Toyota Series, and one Champions Tour tournament. I'll rate myself a B plus at this point in time because I've got eight out of nine money finishes. I've qualified for the Toyota Series Championship. Um, I've got the third place in the Champions Tour. Uh, but I don't have any top tens on the pro circuit, so that, that's why I'm not giving myself an A minus. I'm giving myself a B plus because the lack of top tens on the pro circuit and lack of top ten on the Toyota series. So um, next will be um, what's next? Will it be a Champions Tour on Lake Vermilion, July 7th? That's the next one. So. Got a couple weeks off. If anybody wants a guide trip, uh, you know, send me a message on my Facebook Messenger and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, I don't know, it, I'll guide, 
uh, we'll talk about price and that, see what you want to do, see what I want to do, see where I'm at in my northern Minnesota, my southern Minnesota, it all depends. But other than that, uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Over.